Hello, today's lesson is topic 3.9. We're solving problems with percent. This is the second lesson where we're going to solve problems that show an increase or a decrease and we're going to use the percent proportion to do that. So when we look at changing in values, whether we're seeing an increase in prices, let's say at the gas station, or a decrease in prices, for example, we can see a decrease when we get a sale, we get something on sale, we're going to calculate problems that involve these types of situations. The nice thing about today's lesson is it doesn't matter if you have an increase or a decrease, the way you solve the problems are the same. So we have two steps that we need to follow. First of all, we subtract the amounts that are given. Whether that's an increase or a decrease, we're going to subtract and get the difference between the two amounts. And then what we do is put that into the proportion over the original amount. It's really important that the denominator there is the original price or amount. And then on the other side of our proportion, we set up the percent. So we put the percent over 100. And by doing so, we can calculate either the percent of increase or the percent of decrease. So for example, one, the rent went up from $375 to $427.50. So the question is asking us for the percent of increase of the rent. So the first thing we're going to do is subtract $427.50 minus $375. And when we do that, we're going to get an increase of $52.50. Now we can set up the percent proportion. So in step two, we're going to take that $52.50 and we're going to place that over the original amount. Remember that this, $375, this is originally what the renter paid. So we're going to put the $375 down in the denominator there make our proportion, setting up the percent, our unknown, over 100. Now we can solve algebraically. We can assign a number such as n, or we can quickly cross multiply and divide. I'm just gonna show the algebraic method here. So we're gonna have 375 n is equal to 100 times 5250, which ends up being 5250. And now we can divide by 375 on both sides of the equation, cancelling to isolate our n or our unknown. So when we divide by 375, we get 14. And so the percent increase is 14% for that rent. Example two, the hours of operation of the Tim Hortons restaurant at the college were reduced from 35 hours a week to 28 hours a week. What is this percent of the cut in operations? So this is a percent of decrease question, but we still follow the same steps. Step one, we subtract the 35 minus the 28, giving us a seven hour difference. Then we set up our proportion. Those seven hours go over the original amount. We started at 35 hours, so that's going to go in our denominator position. We set up our percent proportion, and now we can calculate the percent of decrease. 35n is equal to 700. We divide 700 by 35. And then we go ahead and we solve. And so when we solve, n is equal to 20. And we can see that the percent of decrease is 20% of those operational hours. The next set of problems are GST problems. We've got a couple ways we can solve GST problems. So I'm going to show two methods today. So when we see GST in Alberta, we know it's 5% and we know that we have to add that 5% amount onto the original price that we're paying. So if we look at 
Example three, Jane bought a pair of pants that cost $59.99. At the checkout, she's charged 5% GST. So one method we can do is set up a percent proportion. So we can say, well, what is the GST amount on $59.99? And we know we're at 5% over 100. So we can then cross multiply and divide and we will see that X is equal to 2.99 uh, nine five there. So that's quite a long decimal, but we'll end up rounding at the end. When you're calculating GST, don't round your decimals as much as possible until the very end. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and add this amount, this 2.9995. We're going to take this amount and we're going to add that to 59.99. And the book shows adding $3, but I like to add the decimal amount and then round at the end. It gives me the most accurate answer. And later on, you may find that there's some differences if you do round. So I get 62.9895. And I'm going to round to the nearest cent. So this is going to give me an answer of 62.99. So this is the first method. So I'm just going to title this method one. And it's probably the most commonly used method. And if you're comfortable with setting up per percent proportion, this is a great method for you every time you're calculating GST. But there's a couple other methods that are a bit faster. So I'm going to show the second method, which also uses a percent proportion, but it's just a little different way of thinking. So what we do in this problem is we say, okay, if I'm going to pay $59.99 for these pants, then that's 100% of the price that I'm paying. But if I have to pay GST on top of that 100%, that's an extra 5%. So what I'm actually paying is 105% of the $59.99. And so I can set up a proportion that reflects this and I can get my total price in one step instead of two steps. So what I'm doing is I'm adding mentally, 105 is the result of adding 100 plus five, but I don't have to typically show that to myself. And then I put that over 100 and what I'm solving for X is 105% of the total price. When I cross multiply and divide, what I end up getting is exactly that same number for the second step in my first method. So X is going to end up being rounded 62.99 when I use this second method. A third method now, I don't want to confuse anyone, but we have so many different ways, whoops, method three in math to solve GST problems. Third method is to say, well, okay, GST as a decimal at 5%, if I convert that 5% to a decimal is 0 0.05. And then what I can do is I can multiply 59.99 times 0 0.05, which is pretty quick, that's going to give me that same decimal. So that would be my first step, quick multiplication. And then for my second step, I would be adding that amount. So then I would have to take that amount on my calculator and add that back to 59.99, giving me a total answer of 62.99 when I round to the cents. All three methods are good, all three methods work. So it's a matter of deciding which one of these methods seems to make the best sense to you. Sometimes we face problems that involve finding a whole when we're given a piece of or a part of, and example number four is like this. 
Saba is doing a kitchen renovation. The contractor wants to be paid 20% of the total cost up front before starting the work. Saba pays the contractor $1,500. So that $1,500 is 20%. How much is the total cost of the renovation? A diagram or image can really help us see what's going on here. That Saba is paying $1,500, which is just a chunk or a piece of the total cost. And that chunk amount is worth 20%. What we don't know is the total, which includes that $1,500. But what we can do is set up a percent proportion. And what we can see when we set up a per percent proportion is 100% of the work always goes in the same position. And Saba has already paid 20%. So the 1500 has to match over in the same position as the 20%. And down below the 1500 is going to be a larger number, which is the total for the whole project. So by carefully putting our numbers where they match, that the 20% is indeed the $1,500, then we can have our variable, our x, in the right location. When we go ahead and solve this, we end up getting 20x is equal to 150,000. We divide by 20 and divide by 20, cancelling. And so x is equal to 7,500. So the total cost of this renovation is $7,500. Example 5 is very similar to example 4 except that um, the numbers are just presented a little bit differently. So Min paid $420 for a bike that was on sale for 40% off. What was the regular price of the bike? So we know, obviously, that the regular price of the bike is going to be higher than the $420 that she spent. So this diagram can show us that she paid $420, which is 60% of the total price, so she saved 40% of the total price. And of course the total price being 100%. So what we can do is we can use the amount that she paid and set up a percent proportion. So she paid 60% of the 100%, getting that 40% discount. And so then we just line up what Min paid. 60% is $420 and 100% price is what we don't know. So now that we have the percent proportion set up, we can calculate 60x is equal to 42,000 divide by 60 and divide by 60. So x is going to be 700. So the regular price of that bike is $700. So let's try the do together. Number one, the cost of parking went from $9 per day to $12 per day. What is the percent increase of the parking fees? So we've seen these percent of increase questions in the example. First step is to subtract. Whether you do this on paper or you do this uh, mentally, it's no matter. We're going to see that the increase was $3, and then we can set up our percent proportion. So $3 was the increase, and remember the original amount needs to go underneath the $3. So that $9 is going to go there, is equal to what percent out of 100? We calculate 9x is equal to 300 by cross multiplication, divide by nine on both sides of the equation, isolating x, 300 divided by nine gives us a repeater decimal. We end up getting 33.3333 on our calculator. So we can just use the repeater bar and we're going to put the percent symbol. So we had a 33.3% increase 
in those parking fees. For number two, Jamal bought an iPhone for $730. Find the cost after GST. So GST here is 5%, so we're going to use that value. I'm going to show all three methods again. You have a number of GST questions to practice in the exercise, so you're going to practice using the method that you best prefer. So the first method is to set up the percent proportion, finding out what the GST amount is. So what is the GST on $730 if the percent of GST is 5% over 100? You're going to calculate that. So you're going to end up getting X equal to 36.5, which is really $36.50 GST. And then you're going to add that 36.50 plus the 730, giving you a total price of $766.50. So remember, first step, setting up your percent proportion for the 5%, solving for that, and then second step is adding that amount onto the original price, the 730. Second method is to add the GST to 100%. So this is where you say, okay, what is the cost if the price is $730? Knowing that the GST means I'm paying more than 100% value for that phone. So I'm going to be putting the GST amount with the 100% giving me 105% out of 100. And when I do that, I'm going to get the total price right away. Because I did the adding step quickly, first, I'm able to solve for the total cost right away. So this method has its benefits for GST for sure. Even for discount questions, it can be used. The third method is to use decimals to recognize that GST as a decimal is 0.05. I quickly multiply that by 730, getting 36.5. And then I go ahead like method one and I add the 3650 onto the 730. And the reason why I'm adding this zero on here is because when we express our answer as money, we don't want to have 766.5. That's not how we read money. So we would have to fill in that zero there for the ones place, pardon me, for the cents place, the hundredths place in the decimal. So no matter which method you use, 766.50 is the cost after GST. So you can choose the method that you best prefer, or you can try a couple different methods in the exercise.